Welcome to the Firing Squad Podcast, where four guys talk about blazing hot topics that they discuss when no one else is around. No fluff, no bull. They tell it like it is. And now, here is the squad. All right, everybody, we are back. And I know you're used to hearing Ham's voice, but Ham big timed us tonight for uh, another appearance, apparently. So Hollywood, nigga. So I'm the captain now. <laughs> I'm the captain. <laughs> I get to do the intros. <laughs> so you got me, Lance, and we have Creek. Yo, yo. Rope. We back. We back. And we have a special guest who's been on our pod before, Dom. Say what's up, man. What's up? What's up? So we got Dom on. He's live in the studio taking ham spots since he big time. We live, baby. Yeah. I hope you at least listen to the pod ham since you're too good for it. But let's get into it. Yesterday. And Lyles, we miss you, bro. And yeah, you, shout out to Lyles. Yeah, Lyles. But um, I guess the biggest news starting out is that yesterday the Golden State Warriors won their second out of last three attempts. World Championship in basketball. Thoughts? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Is anybody Ooh. happy for them? On the- I'm indifferent. I won't even say I'm happy for them, but you know, if if Steph did his thing, cool. Notice I said Steph. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Creek? You a basketball head? Yeah, I mean, I walked away with I walked away with a few uh, few conclusions. One, there's no way on God's green earth that Golden State would have legitimately beat Cleveland, in my opinion, without KD. Yep. There's just no way. So I see exactly why Draymond made that call or started heavily recruiting KD midway through the season last year before they even got to the playoffs. I see why that happened. Um, and I see why he put the screws on it after they lost. Um, but I really feel like I'm, you know, Kind of piggy pack off of what Dom just said. Kind of somewhat indifferent. I mean, I think we all saw the end of this story before the uh, before the playoffs even got started. So I just wish they would have been able to push it to six. But you know, I'm not surprised with the end. It's not surprising. What about you, Rose? Yeah, I kind of agree. I kind of agree with Creek more. I don't like it at all. I ain't like it the day that KD went to them and signed to them because I feel like he was up on them. 3-1 the year before, and they didn't close the deal. And for you to go run to the team that you couldn't beat in the conference finals, that's weak. Yes, I understand so you want to go get a ring or whatever, but you could have stayed down till you came up with your same squad that you were playing for for years. And, like, you ain't see MJ couldn't get past the Pistons and go play with Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumas. He didn't do that. Right. He just kept playing and got better and better until his day came and he beat them. Now he's a legend. KD, if he just stayed true to the squad, eventually he would have beat them, won the championships, and he would have been good. But he got a championship now. But I, I understand it. Okay, cool. I don't still, I still don't like it, but I respect it. And, and I think but that's it was a the... 70, 73 and nine team as you went to one of the greatest teams ever, and you go, you a top three player in the in the whole NBA. You go to a team like that, they need you to begin with, but you yeah, won. Exactly. Okay, congrats. What up? And I think that's but the biggest that- thing, though. I think the biggest thing is that because they always compare it to uh, what LeBron did building the super team. But to me, the fundamental difference is he went. He is the whole cliche: if you can't beat him, join him. That's what he did. Like he went to the team that he couldn't beat. And when LeBron went to Miami, he was like getting a group of friends up together, right. not because they were dominating the league and he wanted to get a ring. So that's the only difference. With that being said, for whatever reason, Golden State is one of those teams I just can't hate. Like right. I actually like them because typically I hate team. I hate I hated the Yankees when they was at the top. I hated the Lakers. Um, I hate the Patriots. I just oh. hate teams like that. Even though I'm a Cowboys fan, I just hate teams like that. But for whatever reason, they're just fun to watch. And and I agree. I think you said it, Creek. If it wasn't for KD, they definitely then Cleveland would have another ship because Steph Curry gets ghost. In like those big games, right, he does. like the, he in the series, it, yeah. not he'll have like one big game, but the overall series, he's just kind of like, uh, right, you know. It's, so it's that. I would, he's I would, not enough. I would even say like, I I can't say that I like 
or respect the move. I understand it. But my thing is, ring chasing is cool, but I I can't admit how much I abhor the idea of, wow, this team took everything away from me. So now I'm going to leave my boys and go play for them. Like, you, so Here. many other options. This KD song. Yeah. Yeah. I think that sums up. Basically. KD. I got I got I got one more point too. So understand too that the Golden State Warriors lost one game in a whole playoffs. And that just shows right there like the whole league is kinda of watered down the competition. Nobody can really play with them. So like that's hurtful for the NBA. You got a game that it's not even competitive. Do we really want to watch that? We know Golden State Warriors gonna win every year. I don't wanna see that. One like, game on the, the entire right? playoff. That is crazy. You shouldn't even be able to do that in professional sports. No, period. Unless it's the NFL, exactly. because if you lose, you out. That's the only only sport you should go undefeated in the playoffs <laughs> is the is the NFL. That's it. You know well, what's wild? Uh, here's the, here's the thing. I got. I mean, I guess I, I know we're not going to spend forever on this, but how do y'all feel about this? Is the argument that really really drives me up the wall when you get told, "Well, KD left a better situation." Would you get mad at your at your at your homeboy if he quit his job? Or with the um, sign on at another at another place of employment to improve a situation, you're gonna be mad at him. It's not the same argument. No, we get, well, it's not the same. I don't think it's the same because no. that's that's solely about money. Argument. Right. It's not. It's. I mean, it's a competitive nature that comes with sports, and more often than not, people who are saying yeah. that are people who never played a sport a day in their life. Yeah. They sit back and watch it on TV and don't Kurt, quite understand shout out to Kurt the Springer. competitive nature of all professional sports. Yeah. So it's not the same argument. Yeah. I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah. I yeah. agree with that. And just talking about how the league's gotten watered down, somebody – I read somewhere they were saying they blame LeBron for opening a can of worms. After he switched from Cleveland to the Heat, it was like, oh, it's a, which I'm I'm portraying what they're saying. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that saying, oh, he did it. So I guess we can get away with this, just trading and making super teams thing now. And now you got, you know, a handful of forces, if even a handful. And it goes to the mindset, because this is, uh, they just posted this in the thread, but it says, Clay Thompson says he'd rather build a legacy than be the guy, the guy for the Warriors. So I think KD felt the opposite. True. Right. He just wanted a ring. He mm-hmm. like a, he like a lot of these girls out here that just want rings, man. To do whatever it takes to get a ring. <laughs> uh, but but the whole super team argument to me, I guess, is kind of crazy because if you look at the history of the NBA, there were always super teams. They were just formed. Some of them were now. If you have a a gripe with how the super team was formed, that's a different argument. Right. But I mean, people would say Jordan, Pippen. He had Pippen who came up and he who he brought up to you know. To, to stature or whatever, but when they signed Rodman, Tony Kukoc, uh, Ron Harper, uh, mm-hmm. that equated to what would be known as a super team. So I mean, a super team no, have man. always been. I don't. I, just, I don't know if that. you can give it that, dude. This, these people have like Olympians, like four. How many Olympians on their on their starting five? Four, four out of five or Olympians. <laughs> Come on, man. And then two of them are MVPs in the last five years. Chicago had three. You forget Tony Kukoc was an Olympian. He just won the Olympian. Oh, but United they don't States. count, man. Come on, man. I could be if I hey, lived in Croatia, I'd be an I'm, Olympian. It's, it's an argument. It's no, still out. what no, I'm no, saying no, is no, it's no, still no. an argument. That's not even the same. Way way different though, like, has <laughs> always been. It's always been super team, dude. My thing is KB, no one's KB, KB, like, the way KB he went about it. Is, right, but not like, just that. Is my issue is not that. My issue is consistently being been the way he went about it. People just totally just skip over the fact that OKC actually had Golden State down 3-1. There were two teams that blew a 3-1 lead last year in last year's playoffs. Yeah. So they had them beat. So it makes you it makes me wonder mentally, they were already recruiting KD. You come to find out they were already recruiting KD before that. So was you know, it makes you look like okay, were they was he point shaving? We know he wasn't. Obviously, he probably was not doing that. But psychologically, how the hell do you blow a 3-1 lead to a team that you had your foot on their neck? Like, you were about to beat them. So, I mean, yeah. I just, it's uh-huh. different. You go to the team that literally just beat you. 
that usually does not happen. But can we agree that Tony so. Kukoc doesn't count as, as far as being the same caliber of player of a super team? <laughs> Hey man, it was a stretch. Nah, it was a stretch. <laughs> when, when he said Tony Cook, I said Olympia like, by what? definition. By definition. Hey, <laughs> what country did he play for, McCreek? He played for Croatia. Croatia, man. Croatia? okay. Croatia, man. Man, come on, man. Nah. They, they are gymnasts. We, we could have made that Olympic team. But I think there's been similar teams in the past, but I think they've been like old. Because to me, from a star power the, that Lakers team, that washed up Lakers team, they put together with Carl Malone, uh, Gary, Payton, Gary Payton, Payton, Richmond, yeah, exactly, Rich Richmond, yeah, Jack, like, Kobe, yeah, that was like an All Star team, but they was at the, you know, they'd already passed their prime, exactly. They were at the end, yeah. Uh-huh. These fools is under thirty years old, man. Like, All come on, moments. man. I mean, Still yeah, moments. you're right, because even Ron Harper, when he was with the Bulls, he was past his prime too. He was past his Cleveland Cavalier days, so. Yeah, I mean, there's always been like a Batman and Robin. I'm not arguing that. That's just been through the history right. of you basketball. Gotta have it. You got to have a Batman but, and Robin. But so I guess that brings me to I guess another point is, and Dom, I think you can probably speak to that. Being the young man on the on the on the podcast tonight, I think it's a mentality difference because all of us old heads, for the most part, feel like. Okay, that's not the way you go about it. But I feel like it's a it's a, like a ushering in of a new mindset. It's okay to go link up with the competition for a greater cause, you know, for a greater purpose if it's gonna benefit you. Whereas back in the day, old heads were more like, "No, nah, I'm coming at you. I don't want to. I don't want to play with you. I want to beat you. So I'm not coming to join your team. I'm gonna be the man of my own team." I feel like now it's kind of like, and you know, it's kind of like okay. If you can't beat them, join them, and get a ring together, I guess that's the thing. Man, you might be asking the wrong young dude. There's a <laughs> there's a, there's a, there's a reason I'm hanging out with y'all now, right? <laughs> um, right, right, right. <laughs> uh, I, I, was, just, I, was ho- I was hoping that was I was hoping that was it, but yeah. like anybody that you know, as far as the younger cats, I'm, I guess I'm just trying to. I understand that take. Per se, because at the end of the day, you know, you want to do something that's going to benefit yourself. So I get Katie making that move. So I get, you know, making that jump and getting the ring because no one wants to be Charles Barkley or exactly. Carl Malone no, right? re- at the end of their career because your career is defined by the rings that you get. No, I agree with that 100% because at the end of the day, in the history books, right? like I don't know, yeah. I don't know what, like, I know Bill – uh, you know, Bill Russell and Oscar Robinson and Wilt Chamberlain were beasts, but I didn't see none of their games. True. So, but I know they got a lot of yeah. ships. So the, that's what the history will show 30, right, 40, right. 50 years from now when people are looking at it like he got a ring. And then, then we then, still talking about these people who think about it, like the millennials, right? They've never seen Carl Malone in his prime. They've never seen Charles Barkley and how how much they used to beast. They just They just know that they're on the list with good players or great players without rings. So that's their narrative. Right. So at least he did something to control his narrative. That's true. So I mean, because Westbrook is going to be the dude that averaged triple doubles but don't have any rings to show for it. But anybody that's actually watched him play was like, okay, he was a dominant player, right? And that's you respect him, but I don't know. That's a but good point. Moving along, so we won't, because um, we could talk about this all day. Right. The next one is still. It happened a week or so ago, but I still think it's relevant to the just the broader conversation of it. But uh, what's his name? Bill. Bill Maher. Bill Maher. Bill Maher. Yeah, I always like to add syllables to his last name. <laughs> like, is that Mayor? Meyer? Mari? Yeah. But it's just Maher. <laughs> yeah. Bill Maher <laughs> said the N word with a with an A, with a G-G-A. Yeah. And we'll talk if there's a difference or it doesn't matter or it can only certain people say that. But he was, um, I would try to pull up the audio, but he was he was talking to, was that a, Congressman or senator, he was talking to some politician. Some politician he was talking to, and he said jokingly, "He's like, I'm a house nigga," is what he said. And of course, he caught a lot of flag as he should for that. They didn't fire him. HBO didn't fire him, and he has he has one of those shows where he could say or do whatever anyway. Right, uh, politically incorrect. Poli- in fact, that's the name of the show. Yep. Politically incorrect. Yep, yep. But I guess you know, of course, black Twitter and black. Inter- uh, internet didn't like it at all the hounds yeah so i'm curious to get you guys take on it the fact that you knew that he was joking